So good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you are all uh, very busy with the online classes. So today we are going to start uh, a new topic, uh, which is on plate girder. Okay. So let me start with the plate girder. Design. So here in this presentation, I want to give a clear picture on what exactly the plate girder, what is the difference between the beam and the plate girder, right? And what are the applications of the plate girder and how they are going to be used. Uh, in the real applications, everything we are going to discuss it today. Okay. See, uh, basically, a plate girder. So it's a, it's also a beam, right? So the difference between plate girder and beam is only in its depth, right? The beam are built up from plate elements to achieve more efficient arrangement of material. So to cover long spans, so than is possible with the rolled beams. So beams usually we go with the hot rolled steel sections, but coming to this uh, girder, so it's also a beam, but we built ourselves. So we built with the help of a plate elements over here. So I think you have seen the plate elements, isn't it? So these plate elements will make member to join into a girder. Okay. One second, guys. So this is how the plate girder is gonna make. So it, which is nothing but a built-up member. Yeah, so uh, that built up member, so when you join the different plates in a form of a planes, web and the planes, the, they are going to be jointed either with the help of a riveting or bolting or welding, okay? So these are the three ways of doing connection of this, I mean, a connection of these plate girders takes place. So that is the reason why it is called as a built up member, okay? So the an alternative of a roof truss is a built up member, why? Because so a roof truss is a very expensive and even fabrication of these roof trusses also will be, uh, you know, uh, uh, takes much time. So uh, the alternative to the trusses, so is nothing but a plate girder, so which requires a higher vertical clearances and have problems of vibration and impact. So in where you can avoid this roof trusses, so again where you can have a higher vertical clearances. So for example, ROBs, railway over bridges will be there. So where that bridge is supposed to have a lot of vertical clearance in its uh, you know, movement. So by that, when you want to have a vertical clearance, okay, vertical clearance to movement and have a problems of vibration and impact. See so what happens to this uh, uh, process, you know, when the structure is subjected to, uh, you know, moving load. So there will be a lot of vibration and impact loads where the trusses aren't able to carry that kind of load. Why? Because there are many joints in roof trusses. If you take any example of the roof truss, a roof truss will have a lot of joints, isn't it? So where the joints are uh, uh, connected with the help of a welding. So welding can't take the fatigue loads. So by that weldings easily uh, undergo failure in the roof trusses when they are subject to vibration and impact loads. So that is the reason why we go for the plate girders where the lot where the structure is subjected to a lot of vibration in the fatigue loads, fatigue load, nothing but impact loads. Okay, that is however it has low torsional stiffness, provide box girders where needed. So again, so those kind of um, structures will have a less torsional stiffness. So that is the reason why when we go for with box girders whenever we require. So plate girders usually have low torsional stiffness. So for that, whenever we require, we can go for the Next to the plate girder, which is a box girder. Okay, so box girder is also a structural element which we use for long spans, which carries a heavy loads, and where it should have a uh, torsional stiffness. Okay, that is how we prefer the plate girders. Okay, so let me tell you the different uh, uh, nomenclature of the plate girder. So this is what the plate girder looks like. Okay, so there uh, and which is a built-up member. So top, you can see the top flange, right? So this is a top flange. And the bottom, you can see the bottom flange, right? See how the plate was uh, welded uh, to the web. And the center portion of the structural element, which is called as a web. So this is your web, okay? So you can see the web, isn't it? And top flange, on the top of the flange, you can see some kind of uh, connectors. So we call them as a shear studs, okay? So what do you mean shear studs? When we go with the shear studs, you know, when you are using this plate girder as a deck girder, okay, when you are going to cast any deck on the top of the compression flange, then we go with the shear studs like this. And you can see the vertical stiffener which is provided 
along the long tunnel access to the web. So this is called a web stiffener. Okay. So why this web stiffeners are need needed? Why? Because your web is very slender here. Web is subjected to buckling. Web may subjected to crippling. Web may subjected to you know, crushing at this part. Why? Because web is very slender, which is having more in length. So to make your web uh, stiffen, so you have to provide web stiffeners towards its longitudinal length in a vertical way. So this is how the web stiffeners are going to be provided. Okay. So flange to web, you are going to connect with the help of a fillet weld. So here the welding is done. So the welding is nothing but a fillet weld over here. Okay. So this is how the nomenclature of the uh, plate girder looks like. And let me show you the other uh, stiffener which is provided along its length uh, in a horizontal way. Okay. So those stiffeners are called uh, horizontal stiffeners. So not only web vertical web stiffeners, you are going to provide even horizontal stiffeners also to the web, which is uh, uh, controlling the buckling of the web. As the web is very slender, where it is subjected to heavy shear force, it may bend okay it may buckle so to avoid this buckling you are going to provide vertical stiffness along with the vertical stiffness you are going to provide even the horizontal stiffness also along in its length so that is how the plate girders usually have okay right so now yeah so now uh, we will just define a beam what do you mean beam what do you mean the girder what is the difference between beam and a girder and it okay uh, difference i will let you know See beam, how you define a beam? So beam is a primary part of the structural frame as we know. So where the system special, I mean specially designed to carry what? To carry distributed loads. So beams usually carry the distributed load which is falling from or which is acting from walls or any roof system. Okay. So that is how the beams usually carry the loads and which is acting as a structural framing system. So where the beams are one of the most commonly designed elements of structure in engineering. So why? Because to resist loads and its primary mode of deflection is bending. So that is why beam is one of the important structural element in structure where it is going to carry uh, different loads and where it is primary mode of deflection is nothing but bending for the beam. So it is mainly used for resisting bending moments, isn't it? So we know that and vertical loads and shear forces. So beams are designed for bending moment vertical loads and the shear forces under under limit state of strength okay so that is how beam is defined so let me tell you what do you mean uh, girder the girder is basically a beam so which supports other small beams and act as a main horizontal support of the structure so that is how we define the girder understood so girder in the sense it is also a beam but it is not just supporting the roof system it is supporting the beams which are placed in its lateral direction okay and acts as a main horizontal support of the structure unlike beam girders are designed to support major concentrated loads such as such as columns okay and such as beams so in earlier you have seen beam the major uh, uh, support a major load is uniformly distributed load in the beams but in girder, the major supporting, uh, I mean, major loads are going to be a concentrated loads, which are going to uh, support the columns or beam reactions. And then load bearing capacity is much higher than the beam. That is how the beams are going to be, I mean, girders are going to be designed. Okay. So as we are telling, your uh, girders will have majorly the concentrated loads than the UDL loads. Why? Because it is going to be supported columns or beams in its, in its directions. So that is how the girder is going to be defined. Now I will show you some pictures how the uh, beams are going to be carried the concentrated loads and how the beam, uh, sorry, girders are going to be ca carry the concentrated loads and beams are going to carry the uniformly distributed loads. Okay, right. So here the difference between beam and the girder. So here a plate girder is actually a deep beam. So we call plate girder as also a beam, but which is having more in depth. The limit states applicable to beams are still applicable to plate girders. Dante? Whatever you design for beam under limit state of strength and limit state of serviceability, the same you can follow even for the plate girders also. Okay, there is no special designs for plate girders, but additional uh, elements are to be designed for the plate girders, especially. Okay, so that is what in limit state design you can follow the same design procedure whatever you followed for the beams. So all rolled I and wide flange beams have 
compact webs and only the few sections have non compact flanges i think you all know what do you mean compact and what do you mean non compact isn't it so they are the uh, classes of the beams okay so we are going to consider beams uh, wide flanges which are under uh, compact webs and only the few sections having non compact flanges so when you are considering web as a compact section where your webs are undergoing plastic analysis i mean you have to go with the plastic sections okay which is under permanent deformations and non compact flanges and so which is under elastic deformations and matter so that is what we need to understand based on the compactness and non compactness of the members so when the beam is non compact or slender they should be checked for local buckling only artham avutunna so eppudaithe beam compact aithe no issue when the beam is non compact or slender definitely you have to check your beam for local buckling i mean web for local buckling why because webs will undergo buckling so when they are falling under non compact or slender i think you already know how to check whether it is falling under compact section or semi compact section or slender section based on its uh, you know uh, width to thickness ratios okay that is there in your table number 2 okay got it so based on that only you can able to differentiate which class your beams are falling under so in general plate girder webs are typically slender and have web stiffness as we know plate girder webs are very slender as its thickness is less compared to its length and have web stiffness also so the fragile and shear strength of the plate girders are largely related to the web understood so when you take overall girder your web is going to play a vital role in terms of its design okay so that's why uh, your uh, webs are supposed to be designed for flexural and shear strength of a plate girder and largely related to the webs so that is how your different beams and girders are going to be differentiated now i will show you one small differentiation table where it can call it as a comparison chart you can able to understand the difference between a uh, beam and a girder so here beams are horizontal members as we know and one of the most commonly designed element of the structure which is a beam but girder girder supports smaller beams and acts as a main horizontal support of the structure so that's the difference so now next difference it is typically intended to carry distributed loads but here it is typically intended to carry concentrated load artham avutunna see you may come across this kind of theoretical questions also amma so please concentrate on this difference much in the kind of when you go for interviews also they may ask you the difference between beam and girder you should be at least able to tell two to two three different differences so in the first one uh, based on the supporting you are defining the second one based on the loading so girders will carry concentrated load beams will carry udl loads and beams it is mainly used for resid resid residential projects like buildings and tall structures the next one is applications so beams are majorly used for residential projects and not only for even for the tall standing structures but girders it is mainly used for commercial structures such as a flyovers and bridges artham avutunna so that is how the girders are going to be used for flyovers and the bridges why because where the loads will be more and the member should be designed for heavy depth and obvious ga eppude the load heavy untundo the beam should have a maximum bending strength eppudu maximum bending strength untund beam ki when you increase the depth obviously beams will have a maximum bending strength and here beams are mainly classified as simply supported beam fixed beam and cantilever beam so when you are designing your beam either in your rcc or steel structures beams basically classified into simply supported beam and term fixed beams and term cantilever beams so that but coming to girder here i beam girders are the most common type of girders used in bridge constructions so here we use i beam girders in a form of a simply supported okay so that is how the girders are going to be made only with an i sections okay so in next one all beams are not necessarily girders ikkada beams ane girders avalsin pan ledhi but here all girders can be called as a beams okay that is a difference so beam never be called as a girder but girder can also be called as a beam why because it is also it is also performing or functioning same like a beam understood but beams can't perform same like a girder so that's why girders can be called as a beam but beams is not necessarily called as a girder okay and next one fabricating beam does not require considering additional requirements so for casting or for fabricating you doesn't require any kind of uh, you know, fabricating yard or uh, any kind of industrial for manufacturing these beams but for girders definitely you require a fabrication unit okay 
so yard dundal pedduga where you have to um, prepare your girders based on the requirements and considering essential factors such as erection untundi dantlo stability untundi plate sizing untundi crane girders untai launching untundi everything will be there in the girder in beams it won't be like that beams are a simple requirements to fulfill aipothe but girder we have to go through lot of activities to place or even to erect the girders okay so that is a major difference between beam and the girder so let me show you one video how the see how girder and beams are classified over here chudandi ipude nenu mana beam ki girder difference chusam kada yeah see as we told you why beams are carrying udl loads and why girder is carrying uh, concentrated load so here this these are all beams kada ikkada meeku violet color lo kanipichevanni beams so beams carry udl load why because on top of the beam you are going to place a floor right i mean slab and on the top of that there will be a roof structure so where the all beams will carry udl loads but coming to girder here the girder is supporting the beams right isn't it so by that in in uh, when you are designing your girder you have to design your girder at on uh, it as a concentrated load like how many concentrated load are acting on the girder so this is one concentrated load this is another concentrated load this is another concentrated load so that is how you have to design your girder for point load nothing but concentrated load and your beams are to be designed for udl load okay understood so that is why we are classifying your beams and girders in a different way right yeah so now you can see some practical examples of plate girders so this is a railway bridge so you can see a long plate girder which is having more in depth and which is supported laterally with the other beams in the lateral direction and all your uh, uh, beam web i mean sir girder web is supported with the help of a vertical web stiffness like this isn't it so another example of a plate girder we we can use as a rob which is called a river over bridge okay there are three rob some one is railway over bridge the other one is river over bridge and third one is road over bridge and it ne rob se andaru so based on the uh you know at that function you have to decide whether it is a river or road or railway bridge okay so here you can see the plate girder which is in a tapering section so why tapering section as you know your beam will transfer its force to the supports so by that your supports are supposed to be carry the end reactions where your section should have more in its cross sectional area so that's why your section is having more in depth at the support okay and this is how the tapering section takes place and the whole load will transfer in in terms of tensile wave okay that's why it is like this examples of plate girders which is now i am showing a road over so railway over bridge okay you can see railway over bridge on bottom of the bridge there is a railway track on top of that it, it may be a road right so plate girder bridge in usa so you can see the plate bridge so which is a road over bridge so there is a bridge which was constructed over the road right so let me show you some nomenclature so like plate girder with the holes for service so here uh, some kind of holes they do in the web for the uh, service conditions okay they if they want to do some servicing to the web to strengthening the web at its part so there are some circular holes will be made in the web to make it stiff end in the future so there may be a circular holes or there may be a rectangular holes which is which will be made in the web part okay so here another video where you can find a few more information on plate uh, girders so these are the practical uh, video so where it going to show you the plate girder how it looks like so these are all uh, plates plain plates and web plates and matter why they use these plates so to connect to major girders and matter right and you can see the vertical stiffness web vertical stiffness like that
so they are web vertical stiffness and you can see on top of the compression plane what are they they are called a shear piece okay so these are the one which are going to connect it to the deck okay so where they are supposed to control the shear deformation of the plane one is shear piece so choose the vertical web stiffness along the Okay, see how long the girder was. I think it's it will be almost uh, uh, two meters of height. See how the bridge was uh, connected like this. Okay, so the long tunnel plate girders are supposed to be. Uh, even connect uh, in a lateral direction. So whatever here you are, I mean whatever the uh, element you are seeing here, right? These are called cross diaphragms. So these are the cross diaphragms which are connecting your long tunnel plate girders laterally. Okay, ila gorada connect yesa. So here instead of using a plates like this or an angles like this, you can directly use another girder also which can be supported your long tunnel girder laterally. Ila gorada sin gorada manu place the. Okay. See here, you can see uh, splicing. Okay, so this is called plane splice, which was uh, made at the bottom of the central plane. Okay, guys. So I think these are the structures where you have to. You know, visually seen in the real application. If for me to see, don't forget they are all plate girders. All our Hyderabad uh, recently constructed flyovers are uh, made with the plate girders only. So plate girders, no advantage is it can accommodate long spans. Okay, it can accommodate long spans and uh, it can even uh, carry heavy loads and matter. So that is how the plate girders are majorly used for uh, you know bridges and this kind of flyovers. Right. Okay. So there is another video. So I can share this presentation to you guys where you can go through the other video. So where you can see the uh, each and individual uh, element of the plate girder in a clear way. Okay. So this video will show you uh, every element like what is web stiffener, what is splicing, what is girder. So like that, what is the bearing? What do you mean pedestal? So when you go to make video, let's do this from there. So for the time being, I am not uh, showing you the video completely. For the glance, you can show have a look. So this video is around the four minutes of video. So where you can see and you can observe this, uh, you know, uh, plate girder individually how it was connected. See here, I would like to share you one uh, 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 note. See here, you can see this girder, right? Right. So this is the major plate girder. So you can even connect another girder in the lateral direction like this. So this is also a girder. So which is connecting this longitudinal girders lateral.